Hi, want to learn some awareness of hazards? Come on, let's try to figure it out. deep within from the indigenic processes of volcanism or earthquakes. We are all subjected to various hazards, especially this type like earthquake, volcanic eruption, and landslide. Now, let's take a look at each of these. Earthquake An earthquake, also known as a quake, tremor, or trembler, is the shake of the surface of the Earth, resulting from the sudden release of energy in the Earth's lithosphere that creates seismic waves. Earthquakes can range in size scale from a device called the Richter scale, where 1 is the weakest and 10 is the strongest. The seismicity or seismic activity of an area is the frequency, type, and size of earthquakes experienced over a period of time. Sometimes, if the earthquake occurs under the ocean and subduction happens, this will result into a tsunami. Tsunami. A tsunami came from the Japanese word which means harbor wave or also known as a seismic sea wave. It is a series of waves in a water body caused by the displacement of a large volume of water, generally in an ocean or a large lake. Volcanic eruptions. A volcanic eruption occurs when hot materials from the Earth's interior are thrown out of a volcano. Lava, rocks, dust, and gas compounds are some of these ejecta. Eruptions can come from side branches or from the top of the volcano. Some eruptions are terrible explosions that throw out huge amounts of rock and volcanic ash and kill many people. Some are quite outflows of hot lava. Several more complex types of volcanic eruptions have been described by volcanologists. They are often named after famous volcanoes where the type of eruption have been seen. Some volcanoes may show only one type of eruption during a period of activity, while others may show a range of types in a series. These hazards can brought great damage quickly and unnoticeable if not prepared. In addition, we cannot remove or destroy these hazards, but we can reduce the damage result by following these seven important things. 1. Knowledge Know the hazards in your area, know your vulnerabilities, and know your risks. Know how to find information about the weather and how to protect yourself, family, and property from potential threats. Signing up for weather alerts or download other smartphone apps that can provide you with information you may need. 30 of these apps are free and can be downloaded ahead of time for you to use when needed. Know about the potential risks to your property. For example, do you live in a flood zone? 2. Integration a widespread and strong social network can be very helpful to you during and after a disaster. Help yourself before it, a disaster by identifying those you plan to communicate with during a disaster. Communicate with your neighbors. Do they have disaster plans? What are they? Do they plan to evacuate in the event of a disaster? Make an agreement to share information with each other in the event of a disaster. After a disaster, your neighbors may be a key resource as you begin the recovery process. Communicate with your family. Create a family disaster plan. Where will you go if you need to evacuate? Who is in charge of doing what in an emergency? Select an out-of-state person all the members of your family can contact if you get separated and cannot reach each each other. Be sure everyone knows how to contact the out-of-state person. Social media is a great free tool that you can use. Several platforms, for example, Facebook and Twitter, are available. 3. Trust. 
get to know those community officials responsible for things such as announcing mandatory evacuation. Do this official have a good track for announcing evacuation in a timely manner? Before disasters, identify trusted local media sources that you know you can count on to provide valuable information in the event of emergency. 4. Subsistence Gather the items that you can and your family need to carry you through a disaster. This is an area where many of the preparedness checklists or go kits. 5. Mobility Do you have access to transportation in the event of evacuation? Does your family have a working vehicle? Do you have access and money for fuel? If you don't have a personal vehicle, do you have family, friends, or neighbors that you can evacuate with? Have you made a plan with them? Are you dependent on public transportation? Do you know your community's policy on public transportation in the event of a disaster? Mobility may also include things like the freedom to leave work if needed or the ability to pick up kids from school in the event of an emergency. Make plans for how you can accomplish these things before a disaster happens will better prepare you to take action. 6. Impact Avoidance Impact avoidance is often referred to as mitigation and includes taking action to reduce or eliminate risk of impact during a disaster. This can include activities such as putting in levis or diets on your property. 7. Adaptability You probably have areas of your work and home life that will not change regardless of your preparedness level. They are not easily adaptable. For example, your work may require you to be in an office every day. Make an evacuation more difficult than it will be for someone who can work remotely. Recognizing where you and your family are not able to easily adapt is the first step in thinking of alternate ways to address them in a disaster situation. So to summarize it all, traumatic hazards are cannot be removed by the damage brought by it can be reduced. Reducing its damage through the seven important steps. One, knowledge. Two, integration. Three, trust. Four, subsistence. Five, mobility. Six, impact avoidance and 7. Adaptability Increasing your activities in the following 7 areas may help to reduce your vulnerabilities and better prepare you to both respond and recover from disaster.